Okay, we're going to start with category two. And category two, again, is characterized by a weight-bearing uh, challenge in the pelvis. Um, just a little bit about some of the physiology that goes on. Load is translated through the femurs into the acetabulum and then into the sacroiliac area. Load is also translated on the long axis down through the spinal column into the lumbosacral joint and then into the sacrum and then is distributed into the sacroiliac area. So there's a basket weave of ligaments that hold this together. And along with the joint structure, you can see the sacrum is wider in the superior aspect and tapers. So the sacrum locks together. It's joint structure that gives your body its true foundation. It's joint structure that gives you your stability. We talk about core training, we talk about all that, but the true core is the ligamentous integrity of the pelvis holding this joint structure together. Muscles are meant more to move you, and when your pelvis is unstable, what happens in category two is your muscles are act, asked to hold you together rather than move you. They fatigue, they tire, they burn out. The joint structure and ligamentous integrity give you passive stabilization. It doesn't drain your physiology. However, when the, muscles, when the muscles are asked to support the body, we then have a situation where we're placing massive stress and strain on the glandular system and its overall burnout in the body. So what we're going to do is, category two is uh, really simple. Um, what we're going to do is have FJ come on over here and we're going to run through what we call mind language testing. Um, mind language works on a muscle challenge. It's not so much we're trying to test for their over, and overwhelm them with strength. We're just trying to see if there's a sponginess in these muscles. We're checking circuitry first by touching points and then we're going to check structural uh, integrity by challenging them physically. Okay, so FJ, just hold your arm up. We'll get a strong, strong test. I'm going to push down. You hold your arm up. Ready? And hold. We're going to essentially listen to the patient's body. The body's going to tell us what's going on. I'm not that smart, but the body's very smart. So if we listen to the body, we'll know what to do. Okay? My language testing, we're going to do it from two aspects. One, we're going to check circuitry to see if there's an in integrity of the circuit. And another is we're going to try and overwhelm his body, overload it, I should say, with, uh, with physical structural challenges. So what we want to do first, we'll step you forward a little bit more, FJ. What we want to do first is we want to test for a strong indicator muscle. I'm going to push down. I'm going to use just light, not too heavy a pressure. I'm going to stabilize the shoulder. I'm going to push down. You hold your arm up, FJ. Ready? And hold. Okay, good. He's very strong. Now we're going to have him reach around backward, and we're going to go just to the left L5 lamina with the volar surface of his left index finger. It's important for polarity's uh, sake that you have the volar surface. Now we're going to hold that arm up again. A positive test would be that we're going to see a weakness in that arm. Some people will fully blow. Some people will just get spongy. You have to be sensitive. The more you do it, the better you get. But what, what, what classically what happens, I don't care if the guy is, is 300 pounds and is a weightlifter, I can push him down with one finger. So I'll say, ready, and hold, and he'll just blow. A lot of times you'll get a collapse of the, the side will just, they'll hold their arm up, but their side will collapse like this. And so that's indicative of a category two. Now, that's checking for circuitry. Now, if we want to unilaterally load one sacroiliac at a time and check for SI joint instability, it's almost like a cross-reference test. So, and patients can understand the structural overload more than they can the circuitry. Now, when I have you do FJ, stabilize their hips and just hold them so that you have some balance support and raise, stand on your right leg for me. And you only have to do it for a minute. Now stand on both. Now raise your arm up again. Once again, ready and hold. Boom, they blow. They might not blow on the first try, but they'll blow on the other more than likely. Now stand on your left leg. Sometimes both blow. It is what it is. Stand on both. Once again, ready, and hold. Boom. Okay, so category two. Again, you're going to place the patient's left index finger volar surface to the, on the left L5 lamina. Okay? Category two. If they have a bad shoulder, you can get complicated. There's a, such a thing called surrogate testing. More on that later. Okay, so that would be category two. You're also going to have a painful first rib. I mean, you come in here on a category two, they're going to have a first rib that's painful. That's because the lats are working overtime trying to stabilize the pelvis and you just start cranking things up here, okay? So a lot of shoulder problems with category two as well. Okay, 
Here's some of the equipment you're going to need. All right, this is called the Steffensmeyer board, and these are the SOT blocks. Now, the Steffensmeyer board gives you a foundation on which to place your blocks. Whether you're blocking supine or prone, you must have a Steffensmeyer board. It provides the right support for the blocks. On the bottom of the blocks, you'll see these carpet tacks, okay? They're not just there to hold the, the blocks together or hold the fabric to the block. They actually allow the block to pivot and move as the patient breathes. The force involved with using the blocks is gravity and the patient's breathing, okay? That's the force involved. That's what makes the adjustment. So you can't just place these, these blocks on a table. It's too soft. You must use the Steffensmeyer board for things to work right. Another thing about the blocking, the farther you place the block under the patient, the more force is going to be translated to the patient. Another thing, you must place the entire block on the Steffensmeyer board. If it's hanging part way off, it's not going to work right. You're going to have uh, a lack of force or an inaccurate one, which is even worse. Okay, so a uh, little bit about the equipment.